I was um, having a conversation with a cop friend of mine, literally a guy from Staten Island, a buddy of mine. He's sort of liberal and progressive, and we just started talking about, um, you know, a, a recent incident of, of police of police brutality. And we just, you know, what started off as a regular conversation ended in a pretty heated, uh, heated discussion. We saw two totally different things on that tape. You know, I saw a guy that should still be alive and he saw a guy that it was unfortunate that he was dead, but that he was resisting arrest. The more heated we got, you know, we sort of ended up on, on two, two, two different sides of, the, of that. And I just thought, man, he's, he's one of the good ones. He's a good guy. I think he's trying to understand me. I'm trying to understand him, but we're like totally missing each other. Like we're seeing two totally different things by the end of this conversation. I thought, well, I could just shut down like everybody else does and just minimize him on my feed and just pretend that his view doesn't exist or I could I could try to understand him. And that, and that was the first step towards making this film was that conversation because it really sat with me. It didn't go away. It was like annoying. Hi, I'm Ronaldo Marcus Green. I'm the writer director of Monsters and Men, which is premiering in the US dramatic competition at the 2018 Sundance Film Festival. The name of the film is called Monsters and Men. Uh, it is a film that takes place uh, around a single event, uh, a killing of an unarmed uh, black man, and how that videotape uh, sort of affects the community. You know, I started researching cases of people that videotape these incidents and like, where are they? And they were scared to put these tapes out, but without those tapes, we wouldn't know. You, we wouldn't know that maybe there was some wrongdoing or maybe that, you know, there was something that could have been avoided. So I got fascinated by, you know, s some of the stories that you were hearing, police potentially coming after people for putting these videotapes out there. On, on the flip side of that, you know, there were some innocent police officers who were sitting in their cars and getting ambushed and, and these things were sort of just happening. So the structure just kind of, unfolded naturally just by me by my interest level in sort of these different areas and how to tackle it in a way that I felt was doing justice and opening up a dialogue rather than closing one. When I look at a tape like Eric Garner or Walter Scott or Philando Castile, you know, the hope is that, you know, these people could still be alive to talk about it. I mean that that's just the bottom line for me. It's not that they weren't doing anything wrong. It's not that I'm, you know, saying this or that about that. It's just that I think that some of these folks should still be here to talk about these particular incidents. Hopefully the killing stops or we can find a way to, you know, uh, de-escalate situations or find a way to, to sort of get out of, you know, this fear of, you know, wow, you know, we find ourselves in the same situation. So how do we get, how do we move beyond? Because it keeps happening. So I think that's ultimately the conversation that, you know, I, I, how do we stop the killing? How does a, a kid like Tamir Rice make it past 12 years old? You know, he's sitting on a, you know, in the playground, whether, you know, he had something that looked like, a, it doesn't matter. He, you know, there's got to be another way. I think police officers would probably say the same thing. I don't think that they want to be in a situation that, that, that causes someone to die. So I think I think the more we talk about it, the more we can try to understand each other, the more we can get to a place of, of change.